new progress against the company class for credit that probably should be made to your um, But if you guys want me to go over any like examples or factors over anything, when you're not clear on, I'd be happy to. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get Cisco constantly adapts their exams, so they're constantly adding new material. Like it's, it's things change in the networking world, they'll, they'll add new questions that pertain to that. And then the other thing they do is they'll throw questions on there that are like, uh, what's the right word? Test, test questions, where they're not really, they don't affect anything on your score. It's just to kind of um, get a, an analysis if people know the answers based on like if they've, if they've done the study for the CCNA. Do they happen to know this question because they also have experience in networking otherwise? Because like I was real thrown off whenever I took it and there was a couple questions. It's like, okay, I read all the book, <laughs> took notes on all the book, I watched all the CBT nuggets. I know for a fact this was not in the material. And so like until I found out afterwards that they've got questions on there that are not uh, don't even really pertain to what you study. Like the CCMP question. It wasn't even like a, I don't. Know, I can't remember what the question was. It wasn't even a CCMP. Kind of related question. to it. It it can be completely unrelated to um, you know the field of networking you're studying. Like I I I'm pretty sure I had a test question that covered like either voice or security or something that I hadn't gotten into at all. Um, so it, you you'll never really know like you know when you're answering a question like how many points it's worth if it's worth any points at all. Um, and your only like real clue on whether it's like a complete like hy hypothetical question that you're not being graded on is if it's something that's just like way out of left field. Um, but the chance of them making it like so out of left field, you won't have any idea like what they're talking about. It's kind of slim. So you probably won't get more than one or two, you know, those hypothetical test questions on your exam. But you should try to answer question every question. Uh, like it matters because you don't really know for sure like if it's going to be a, a fake test question or not. Are there any like uh, compatibility questions like how does the Cisco react with like an ad trend? No, they, Cisco, uh, I guess they've gotten like a little bit better about like everything being proprietary but they're probably not like in all their documentation they're really not going to mention anything about any other vendors unless it pertains to like something that became standardized that was worked on like you know different companies being part of the IETF something like that um, but as far as like asking you like even like a Linksys which you know Cisco technically owns you're not going to see any questions about Linksys or like see any Linksys in the simulation exams it's all going to be Cisco proprietary equipment so you want to give a free ad to another company? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they don't. They don't even want you to know that these other companies exist. So it's kind of, Cisco's kind of like I guess the Windows of pretty the much. Yeah. World. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I asked actually seen that a little bit. Where we said Netopia is working with Cisco and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see, it had some weird question where they were asking you the light status of one of their uh, like their fridge or something. Oh, I know what the question was that yeah. I had no idea one. It was about like an Aeronet. It was a it was a Cisco device. It was like a Cisco Aeronet. So one of their wireless devices, and it was like what a specific light status meant. Like you know, this light was on, this light was off, this light was on, this light was on. Like what does that indicate? That I'm glad you know that. Like I couldn't remember that one. I was so pissed about because like this the stuff on the Aeronet equipment was not in any material like in the book on the website anything so that had to have been like a like a sample test question to see like i guess if you had 
I don't know why. I don't even know why they did it, just to throw you off. Uh, but yeah, that's that is what it was. So. They do it to make you mad and see if you can work on your cue. What's that? They do it to make you mad and see if you can work on your cue. No kidding. Um, okay, well, I'm gonna I'll go over real briefly like IPv6. The uh, when you were asking a question a second ago about um, the possibility of getting an IPv6, the stuff here at the bottom is probably the closest thing you're gonna get to a possible question on IPv6. So. I'll start at the top though. IPv6 uh, created, you know, as we talked about with NAT, IPv4 address space is quickly running out. Um, it consists of 128 bits, so you know, instead of your 32 bits for an IPv4 address, you've got four times as many with 128 bits. Because there's so many bits in there, and they're so long and complicated, they have to represent them as uh, hex characters. So you'll have, uh, you know, as we talked about with hex. A hex bit is 32, or is, is a hex bit is a, a hex character is made out of four bits. So 128 bits, you got 32 hex characters in each one of your IPv6 addresses. Um, it's actually broken into two parts. The first half, the first 64 bits or uh, 16 hex characters, is the network prefix, and the the second 64 bits or 16 hex characters is the network identifier. Um, and it uses CIDR notation for subnets, so you. You don't have to do anything with 255, anything. It's all slash something. Um, now, the the notation differences is all three of these at the bottom are the exact same IP address, and all of them are completely legal ways of representing the same IPv6 address. <coughs> so whenever you have a string of zeros in an IPv6 uh, address, you're allowed to break these down. So, like, you know, we've got you know four sets of zeros, all zeros for that portion, and you can see it broke it down here. Well, it just puts a single zero for each one of those with the the colon in between, the exact same number. Additionally, one time and one time only in each IPv6 address, you are allowed to uh, break down consecutive sets of zero bits to a single double colon. So instead of writing these at all, you can just, you know, put this double colon and everyone will know that well we're missing these, you know, all the bits that are in there are going to be zero. So zero 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 all that broken down into this this single uh, double colon. Uh, 